That was more or less it. What are the columns E and E F? Uh, this uh, this expected. Um, e is travel costs and F is. Oh, E E F and J. The first row, yeah. Uh, this is uh, how much they they said it's going to cost, how much they needed, and the third one is accumulated, how much we paid. And this is like accommodation, food, and travel, uh, what they requested. Some people didn't want to. Some people requested some rather specific amounts, and now they know their ranking if they're watching the video. <laughs> well, they know the ranking, yeah, probably. But I, I, well, individually, it's OK, I guess. <laughs> Uh, but, but so yeah, so that's, uh, that's the ranking, that's how we did it. Uh, everybody voted between minus three and three. We get the median f out of it, and that's how we rank it everybody. Uh, but from that, and that's what the buff is about, uh, I build this list. So there is recommendations for the next people to do, which is not really important here. It's more about how much time you, you're going to need, uh, especially for the Germany guys. Well, you already being through that. So, But for for the Germany B, to have an idea of how much time it takes to get 10 people to agree on something, um, there are notes for that. But uh, the main thing is, um, for me, most of the 10 people had different dimensions, right? Some people care if you were coming from US or not, or Americas. Um, some people cared if you were your first time or if you were from some type of diversity. Some people cared if you were a strong contributor or not. Some people cared if you are willing to pay money or not. So I more or less synthesized all those dimensions here. Uh, as form of questions. And my, my first thing was, most of this should be possible to be automated, likely inside Summit itself. Um, the first, um, the, the, my main concern is, if we publish these rules, because if we tell them, like, this is the rules you're going to be bound to, would people then try to cheat us? Would they try to lie? Do we care about that or not? And then I'm not sure how to collect this answer from the project or from the chairs or from DevConf itself, but we probably need to ask this somehow and, and find out. But so the first thing which is very strong is DevConf in US, if you're coming from America, you got higher points. So if you're coming from South America, Central America, or North America, we got you got better points than other people. This should be fairly easy to find out because people have to tell them, like, I'm coming from this country. So that is an easy one to rank when they don't forget to fill the field. <laughs> the required field. Yeah, exactly. I have a comment about that. Is, uh, I never feel where I'm coming from because I live in France. I am from Spain. And I found very unnecessary to write in the report, like, three person from French came or three French person came. Um, I think it's also your case. I mean, imagine that you are, you are Brazilian. Right, right, yeah. Um, so maybe one of the problems we have in the registration system is that uh, when they're asking you in the text, it's no just plain what for. Right. Okay, that's that's a good point. Um, and probably we can separate those things in terms of this is just going to be used for us to determine if it's a fair price or not. So um, that's that's doable. Um, and also another challenge here is we never had any that comes at Asia or Africa. So when do you prioritize those guys? Like when do you tell it's time for Asia? Because it's always expensive. New Zealand was a, we had a big discussions of, around a request for New Zealand because it was quite expensive. Um, and then it was like, oh, it's easier for them to go to Germany. And then our team was a splitted. No, it's cheaper to go to US. No, it's cheaper to go to, to, to Europe. So well, actually, it's I think, expensive anyway. No, there was one from China, I think, that had that situation rather than New Zealand. I, th I think well, maybe both. I don't know. I, I remember for New Zealand. So, but like in the case of one particular person, I remember from China, the cost of ticket to get to Portland was almost twice what it would be to go for them to go next year. To oh, right. Um, the other thing, which is a very recurrent, and people usually penalize like the it, not only the zero from past years. I remember that. Usually, people get. 
are heavily penalized is if they are not willing to pay a part of their trips. So if people ask for their entire, like, oh, my trip is going to be $1,000, I want $1,000, usually half of the team will penalize heavily against that. Meaning that if I'm coming from Brazil and, and Martin is coming from Brazil and I ask for 1000 but I'm willing to pay 100 I probably will get scored above him if he's not willing to pay some part of it. Does, does it matter? Do we care about it? Uh, because we don't enforce. My, my main point is we never enforce this. If somebody gets a cheaper ticket, we don't enforce it. So, so you go first and then Martin. Yeah, so everybody, even though we didn't have any rules in place, the bursary team members could use whatever basis they wanted for their rankings, yeah. and, and that's fine. But this is something I feel very strongly about, that it's not appropriate for us to penalize somebody for, because we are second-guessing their costs, especially since there are a lot of other costs related to travel beyond. The only thing we, we reimburse is we are reimburse the cost of a flight. If it takes them, if it costs them fifty or hundred dollars to get to the airport because they have to take a bus or they have to, or they have to rent a car or whatever, there are there are costs that pay for their own meals while they're traveling to the airport. There's lots of other stuff that goes into travel that are costs that we're not reimbursing, and I don't think it's fair for us to to second guess and say and for somebody, especially in in countries where you know that's a lot of it's a lot more money. Well, I guess I guess cost of living means that maybe it's maybe it is or maybe it isn't, but. Um, anybody who's traveling, they're they're invested in that, whether they're asking for the full price of their plane ticket or not, unless you know, they're getting a ride to the airport in their town. Right. Uh, ju just this is a little bit different from the, what we discussed over the list. This is like the the person asked for nine percent. They didn't ask for everything. Right. They said, "I'm willing to pay a hundred dollars." That's it. Yeah, but yeah. Right. But, but I'm saying I'm saying exactly that. That how much they say they're willing to pay of their own ticket price right. shouldn't affect. Oh, right, okay, our, 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 our okay. Because anybody that's traveling, there's costs associated with that beyond the ticket price. Right. And there's costs associated with taking the time to do it. I, I completely agree with you. I'm also a little bit torn, though, because in general, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of free stuff, you know, like it's, it's a travel given away for free. Um, usually that leads to more views than if there is a certain like, self-commitment to it. Now, this is not really a form of self-commitment, though, saying, yeah, I can pay 10%. Um, it would be much better if like, they sent the 10% to us, and then we reimburse them 100% afterwards, but that's the Nigerian scam. Uh, <laughs> my point is, though, to get to the airport, yeah. they're already doing that. If yeah. they make it to the airport, they've done it. I, if they I make it to the entirely. conference, they've done it. So I don't, I don't think that should play any role, because, I mean, the, 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 otherwise you are going to be, um, I mean, what if, what if these two Brazilian people you were talking about, what if, if one of them, you know, has four kids and right, right. has zero? I mean, so that's why, the, and, and I mean, all those questions, the idea is to get some feedback because when I'm writing this proposal, I'll try to say, here is the feeling around this topic. And then that's my point is say like, we kind of think that this doesn't matter. So for the next time, the rule, because this year we didn't have a strict rule. Like, it's like, uh, every team member had their own vision and then they rang. For the next year, I would like to have some rules and as much as possible be automated so there is no, um, we, we reduce the margin for interpretation. Tasia? Yeah. There is a topic about that also, you'll see in a minute. Um, the other thing is, does it matter if you're a DoubleConf newbie? This year we didn't have the newbie queue, which seems to be very successful for other years. Uh, I think we should have it again, and I think bursaries should take care of it as a separate queue. Like, we don't need to have other people involved in this process and make it confusing for whoever is subscribing. Uh, but then, for next year, we should be sure to make it 
work and advertise and this kind of stuff. Um, because this year we tried to do that with a few people. I think this is the first time this person is coming and, and, and that also correlates to the next one. For a few people we had this, like uh, we should bring this person, right? This is a minority, like we have, it is not well represented among us, so we should bring um, this person. And then it, it was, everybody felt the same way, so it, it's something that the team cared about, so probably something we should think. But then, what types of diversity we, we cover, right? It's not but just gender, there's other types, and then it, it starts to become tricky. Um, the one big question is what Martin mentioned, is are we worried about people taking vacations on us? Like we are paying for free vacations because you're not covering every single corner and checking everything. Because once we approve it, we are very relaxed. We basically tell S SPI or, or FFIS, it's like here's the list of people, if they send you a ticket and then reimburse them, we don't really go through a long detailed process to do that. So. Um, another common topic that came this year was like, should we penalize people that don't answer all the questions? Uh, we had a lot of that. People that didn't provide all the money information we requested. People that, um, please explain me why do you need the sponsorship? Some, sometimes people just said, because I'm a DD. Uh, is that fair? It's not. This is, this is another of our concerns. Um, some people said, uh, and that's, some people said it's like, I work the entire year for Debian for free. I have my job and I, I spend a lot of time on my volunteer. I think I'm entitled to. Uh, other people actually told a little bit of their lives to us, like things like I have kids and I'm unemployed and, and I really want to see you guys again, but I don't have the money. So we get access to those details. So, um, that's and th that's uh, that's exactly the next point. But before, go ahead, Steve. So, I think when when the person said I'm a DD, it was not. I think that was an answer to the question, "What do you do for Debian?" I think because that was one of the questions: "What do you do for Debian? Why you request a sponsorship?" And I was, "What do you do for Debian?" And the answer was, "I am a DD." I believe when we wrote that question, the purpose of it was to make sure that the bursaries team had enough information to know who the person was, not for them to judge. Their qualifications. We've had discussions in the past about this, and that was how I remember that we were struggling right. that was it was about you, we want to ask the question to make sure that the person who's submitting themselves, that the bursary team has enough information to make an informed opinion, not to judge whether they've given enough detail because right. they think they should have written more. Because like from my perspective, if I know the person is a DD, I don't need more information to evaluate whether they would be a contributor right. to the conference. Pass here. Uh, regarding the vacations, I think, yeah, we could also like keep records for next year. And maybe something that we could uh, encourage is people posting or like making public their activities during that call. Because uh, then we, I don't know in, in how could we scale this, but it's true. Like I, I'm, all, I, all, I, this is also something that I am. I have concerns about, and uh, it's true that once people get sponsorship, like here, we don't have any means of controlling what they do, so they can't really spend the whole day outside and or do party at night and don't attend to talks or walks or whatever. So, if we had a way of um, not really keeping track, but that it very encourage very much people to publish what they are doing, then we could maybe next year have access to what they did last year. They were sponsored and... Sure. So, Murray, then Dave, then... Yeah, um, I think... I personally think it would be fair and appropriate for us to ask people who take travel sponsorship, also, in fact, people who take food and accommodation sponsorship, to have effectively a compulsory Report. Require a report of their DoveConf afterwards. Of course, this wouldn't stop them from having holidays. Compulsory what, sorry? Like Report. just a few, a paragraph or two on what on their DoveConf. Yeah. I think this would really, this okay. clearly would not stop abuse because people can invent something. But I think it, apart, it would discourage abuse a little bit, and also it would help us a lot for going to sponsors in future to say, look at all these useful things people have done who you paid for. We would put it in the final report. Yeah. 
I think it's too late now to I think that's attach additional conditions. We, no. Sure, we can ask. Yeah. And it's not a condition because all we're saying is if you would like to uh, be considered for sponsorship next year, then this is going to be beneficial if you do it. Yeah. Okay. Because it is actually for next year. Dave? So sure. I think that people will forget, and tracking report sounds like a nightmare to me, but I, I think is if you're not a Gen Con newbie, then you should be willing to say what you did at the last Gen Con. And some people will have a tough time remembering, but then, I mean, I think that's fair as part of the process. You're, you're applying for the seventh time for, for sponsorship to DevCon. And uh, so what did you do last time? And it doesn't have to be anything baroque. And I think that would remove some of the enforcement questions. It's just a question on the form. You can either fill it out or not, and, and we can, you know, tell people we're going to ask for this. So yeah. encourage them to make a blog post that they can link to. That would be completely okay from my point of view. But also, uh, anyway. Sorry. Yeah, I, and um, I, I, before Martin, do you still have the point, or you yeah. already made? Right. Yeah. Right. So. I mean, the other thing is, as long as we agree with ahead of time, I think the rules are clear. Like, if you're applying for these, you have to do that. And if you don't submit your report, we are going to penalize you next year. Then it's fine. It's fair game, right? The rules are ahead of time. Um, and the the thing that I mentioned that you said, uh, like about details, is that how much details do we want to know about why people can't afford? Like, does it matter for Debian if you are poor or unemployed or anything like that? Because we do ask that in a very vague question, and people like share details, or, or sometimes they just, as I said, said like, uh, Lucas said that, and he, I, I know I can quote him. He said like, I'm the DPL, I work a lot, so I, I hope I can have the <laughs> sponsorship, Marie. Yeah, I th on that point, I think more important in a way than um, exactly what is the rule on that. I think it's more important that we had a kind of a level agreed rule for everyone. At the moment it's very opaque and some people feel personally that they shouldn't apply for travel sponsorship because they have enough money and other people need the travel sponsorship more. Other people who with good jobs in Europe or the US apply because well they're worth doing work for Debian. Yeah. And that is that part is not fair. I mean at the moment they will probably be treated fairly if they apply, but many people do not apply and it's unfair if some people feel they are entitled to it and apply and get the money every year, and other people never apply. Yeah, that's, uh, Lucas find me during the conference, the um, Lucas Newsman, and then he, he told me, he asked me about how was the process and, and if you could have bring more people and we discussed it a little bit. And one of the things that he asked me to do is for next year to ensure that we advertise heavily that people should apply for a sponsorship. So that we should tell people to ask for travel sponsorship because Debian money is over 200,000 and he wants us to be spending this money to bring people here. Now I hear it. We can do that. <laughs> we need it for India in 2016. India. India. <laughs> Go ahead, Nate. So, I, I mean, I'm fine with advertising that everybody should apply, but I think we should agree that everybody should apply before we advertise it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I think I mean, so. this goes back to the question of how much does financial need matter in the allocations yeah. process. Mm -hmm. Marty and then Marga? I don't think you can ever be able to get a response from anyone um, whether they can afford it or not. You have to with any other um, conference. I think it's important that we work very hard to have as much money as possible so that we can buy it for as many people, people as possible. And in this regard, I would be just briefly interested. I stepped in two minutes late, maybe you said it at the beginning, but it was my understanding now that we didn't use up all the money that we could have used for a travel sponsorship this year. And uh, even though we had like some people in the list, yeah. so that, that was probably because of time pressure and everything. Um, what can we do to, to prevent that happening next, yeah. next I'll, year? I'll, I had two specific suggestions that I made on the list. I don't know if we want to go into that right now. Let's just hear Marga and then you can go. So I have two comments. One is that maybe we could ask people to be volunteers, like for the video team or from this, for something, 
in return for getting the sponsorship. Uh, then the other thing is that for me, financial needs should be a very important point. So participating in Debian is a very important point. Financial need is also a very important point. For me, I think we should try to bring as many people as possible and if you can't afford it, then why should Debian pay for it? If, if you can't afford it, if you can't afford it, then we want you here, so we pay for it. But it's very difficult to assess, and you, you have this, what if people self-assess, and what, I, there's I, I, going to be people that like don't think that what they do is, is valuable enough, but others do, and there's going to be people that overstate what they do, so it's very hard to get that right. Right. Um, I think the two points are related, or is it different? Well, so I was going to comment on, on what can we do about spending money right? and making sure we spend the money that's in our budget. And the two proposals I had were, first of all, look at our historical usage of our, of our travel sponsorship funds and set an overcommit level that we give the bursaries team based on those historical rates just to say, yes, you can approve 1% or 3% more than what's in the budget knowing that we will have some cancellations because we've never not had them. And the other thing is to have stronger expense tracking earlier to the point where we know exactly how much it's costing us out of our budget for each person so that as we identify people who are not attending or as we get as we get closer down and we see like date ranges of people actually attending versus not we can move the money from the, the accommodations and food budget over to travel sponsorship because based on just that alone we had enough money to sponsor another five yep. people but we couldn't be sure of exactly how much money we had in the budget for that until it was too late for them to get reasonable tickets so Murray and then Marty yeah I don't know. again I still personally question how things will really work if we just say that everyone by working for Debian irrespective of financial circumstances is eligible um, we, yes, we may have 200,000 in the bank account, but you could easily spend that on one conference. I mean, this conference probably, the amount people spent on travel would have been a lot more than that. Um, I will say, personally, I haven't yet applied for travel sponsorship for DevCon because I thought I was in a reasonably well-paid stuff. In Europe, I am not deserving, compared to other people, of Debian targeting me with that money. Of course, if, it's now, if it is announced as a policy, everyone working on Debian is ought to be getting travel sponsorship, then I, should, I would apply. Sure. Um, and I'm sure many other people would suddenly start applying, and you then, then you actually will need to um, filter it, and then it becomes a bit pointless that you've told all these extra people to apply. Right. So what's going to happen if we introduce a checkbox that says, um, if you don't get sponsorship, will you still come? We've tried that before. Yeah? And what happened? People say they won't come. So the intent of the current wording on the web page is how much is it going to cost you? How much sponsorship money do you need to attend DevCon? So the intent of the current questions is to ask them to, pro to provide needs-based information to us as input. Um, I don't see any reliable way to ever be more precise than that. I mean, having people evaluate their own needs, people have different views on, on what their, their needs are. So like. And, and just because they have money doesn't mean that they don't have other things that are also important for them to spend it on. If they have a family, if they're if like if it's a significant cost to their family for them to spend the time away at a conference, and as a result they have to give up something else, then it may be that if they don't get sponsored, they're not going to come. Does that mean that because the reason they they would not come isn't due to the balance of their bank account? Does that mean that? we should reject them. I mean, it's a very, everybody has their own personal circumstances and I don't, I don't know that always saying that looking at, at some, how much money somebody makes is, is the driving factor for whether we should sponsor them. So maybe instead of trying to solve that problem, which I think we all agree we can't solve, um, we should focus again on the uh, expecting certain things from sponsored attendees, which includes volunteer session signups and includes a little report that they should send in. And it's not a requirement, per se, but maybe we could at this conference already say that, you know, write your reports, because when we have your report from last year, 
a lot of the stuff that you've done, that's a very that's, that's a very very important piece of data for us to decide to next year on on in terms of coverage. Sponsorship. And then if Moray writes down that you know he's he rewrote Dak um, in that week, <laughs> yeah, no one sponsor him under any <laughs> No, but then like, by all means, you know, heck, you should come again. And rewrite it again. <laughs> <laughs> Murray. But, but again, I think for the I for the financial side, I agree it's not possible to without giving some completely ridiculous 10-page form and lots of numbers, you cannot evaluate people's true circumstances. However, it does seem to me personally that Debian does not sustainably have money to sponsor everyone who is contributing to Debian. That's true. It therefore seems to me personally that we, again, I'm not saying this is wins over everyone else, I personally feel that we ought to be prioritizing people who have some financial need, not merely because they are contributing. And I think if we set that as an expectation and document that, we will already filter people who really have no justifiable financial need. Obviously, what does justifiable mean? mean? You have no way to measure this. Well, you, so are you saying I we should sponsor everyone? Are you saying no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying however you word it, you're going to get some people who are going to feel bad about asking for the money, and then you're going to have some people who are going to feel that what they do is, is important and we have no way to effectively evaluate this by any sort of objective metric. So no matter what we write, people are going to decide to ask for whatever money they're going to ask for, and we have no way of telling whether it's justifiable yeah. or not. But on, on average, the problem should solve itself, kind of, right? Well, but I'm saying that we are already asking the kinds of questions. We already have questions saying, how much do you need? Adding different words doesn't change that it's the same fundamental problem. There is, at the moment, there is no documentation anywhere to tell people whether or not they should. Yeah. Everyone should apply, or that only people who have a big need. Except, except for the emails or the forms that we send, there is no details on this is what we encourage. I'm this not is talking about the form here. I'm just saying the emails that are sent out and so on do not specify at you know. the moment okay. so who ought to apply. Well, okay. There, there is a reason for that, and that is if the three people currently discussing things can't agree on a standard. <laughs> what are the odds that the project can, right? There's a yeah. deep uh, lack of consensus on this issue. So I, that's why it's not but it expressed does, clearly. There's nothing to express. <laughs> it is included. It does seem unfair to me if it's just because the people who brazenly apply are the ones that automatically get funding, and a lot of other people are not currently applying because so, they feel they're not appropriate. So, if the point is that you want to encourage more people to apply, then I'm I'm okay with that. I agree that I think messaging that in a way that encourages people to apply. I, I personally don't think it's sustainable for everyone to apply. Yeah, I think it's not. But if that's if the if the team cannot implement any policy, does not agree on any policy, that then it should then we should whether or not the team tells, then other people should be saying. Everyone should apply. I don't understand what's not sustainable about everybody applying. Everybody applying doesn't mean everybody gets sponsored. It's just more work for bursaries. Yeah. No. But yes. Oh yeah, it's, it's definitely more work for bursaries. <laughs> it is more work and it may happen. It doesn't help the project. Yeah, because then many people that could afford is going to yeah. apply, is going to have a travel sponsorship, so people who really can't come without the sponsorship won't come. Right. So we are trying like we're raising money for people who can and at the end those who can just shift in money. No, I so I disagree. Um it's just either here or there I guess. Um so I think I'm at least I don't understand saying everybody should apply as saying need doesn't matter. And so I think it's a question of where this filtering happens. And I, and I think that Maury has a point that people self-filtering is not a necessarily a good algorithm because if you're, I mean, maybe for some people it's obvious, you know, like, um, what's his name that runs it on to apply for travel sponsorship? Mark Stewart. Vorlon, yeah. <laughs> uh, right, no, the other guy, your boss. <laughs> um, uh, so, but for a lot of people, right, you're, it's tough to say, and uh, so what we should do is, in the evaluation process, 
use that as part of the ranking, like we do now in some kind but, but of random -ish, not very good way. Right, I agree. <laughs> but if we could agree at least that the idea is that it's part of the ranking, that would be progress. Right? I mean, that's a different question. Rather than saying you should only apply if you can't go otherwise. Right? I mean, that seems like not a great algorithm because it's not an easy question to answer anyway, right? Right. You might be able to yeah, I think go I think and like with a lot of sacrifice. Yeah, no, uh, right. Whatever sacrifice means yes. for you. But let me just wrap this and then we can finish the discussion <laughs> because this is the last thing. Uh, so those are ideas. This is different from what happened that it generated the questions. This is actually the ideas that I, I don't think we ever tried. Uh, and I don't know if we we'll ever will. But um, so when I said self-assess, of course I don't mean we'll take that as whatever you self-assess it and, and rank. But it's like, would that work to ask like how much we're involved or how much you plan to be involved next year? Uh, should we switch to percentage values? That is the discussion that um, um, I had with uh, Steve and on the list, which is if you say you can pay $100 out of 1000 but you get tickets for $800, we ended up paying your entire ticket. Should we say instead of its percentage, like I can't pay 90% of my flight ticket, doesn't matter how much it is. And then if you get a cheaper discount, we'll also get, that then also gets a discount. It, it, it doesn't work with, with flight prices. You can't, you, you, you. In my personal, personal experience, I applied. Okay, I'm, I'm offering that right now what, what I, I did in this field. I, I entered $1,100. And a few days later, the flight price was already 100, uh, 1200 or something. Right. So, uh, for me, it would simply not have been possible to come without a sponsorship. Right. And, um, if because there is sometimes this is a situation, um, I can explain it if, if, if you want. But the, the problem is, um, if there were only one percentage, um, I still wouldn't know how many I have to pay myself. So I have no way of planning. Uh, right. I mean, the the point is, you can still say one hundred percent, right? then we will have to deal with if you get a more expensive ticket. So it's a two-way problem. And I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm just saying if we can save money together, but we also means Debian will have to make a reserve. Like Debconf will have to have like, I don't know, 10, 20% reserve because we will get a lot of more expensive tickets, right? So I don't really know. Well, it could be 100% up to Exactly. The number. There is a few things that we can do, but... The other thing is, I don't know if it's, right now we all rank all, everybody. Maybe it's easier if we rank them in different dimensions, like two people rank on geography, three people rank on budget, three people rank on activity and team membership. So this is more about internal dynamics. Um, and uh, the other thing is, this is more about system-wise, and instead of having the ranking having a yes or no, and then you go back to the budget team and they do whatever they have to, which is like, you should sponsor these people, this is high priority, and then this is the next, and then this is the next, and whatever you do, we don't care, this is the final list. Um, and this is uh, the big discussion and topic that we um, discuss it, and Steve is very strong about never reducing the amount of money that people requested. Uh, and he already explained why. And then I, I, I think that in some cases, if you offer 50% instead of nothing would be better. Um, and we, we didn't have time to keep arguing about that because we had to do other stuff. Um, so there but are that's, that's, that's another question. be a better outcome, but there are also cases where that could actually be a bad outcome. Absolutely. As a result of offering it, it results in hardship. And I don't think that we can distinguish those cases with the information that we have, which is why I think it's better to not do it. Yeah. Why, why would it result in hardship? Because if you ask somebody, my plane ticket, how much is your plane ticket? $1,000. How much of it can you pay? $200. And, and that's what they say they can pay. And you come back and you say, 
well, no, we can't give you $200, or we, we can't give you $800, but we can give you $400. And that person really wants to go, but the first time you asked them the question, they honestly told you, this is what I think I can afford. And we offer them less money than that, what are they gonna do? They're going to look at that and they're gonna say, ah, I can get to DevComp if I just make, if I stretch my money a little bit farther. And in some cases, that's, a, that's not a good thing for that contributor to do, and I think it's not good for us to encourage our contributors to sacrifice that much yeah. and uh, beyond next what their initial. Year they can just raise the, the amount they, they ask it for mm -hmm. just in case if we change mind. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. So the last thing that I taught is we don't have a database for sponsorship. So we don't know from year to year what happened, which I'm willing <coughs> to go and try to pursue as much as we can find. And then we would have a database of, hey, we sponsor this guy every single year. Uh, this time he's gonna give his spot to somebody else, right? We, we can try to make these decisions if we have this, because right now we are basically on an empty canvas every single year. Like we don't know what happened. Some of us remind, but we don't. And also changing systems doesn't help with that. So, um, do we have this data? In we can dig, we can data. dig this data. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this data is around somewhere. So I have been in, the, in this committee with Bangura's for help like two, three years. Yeah. At some moment, I started doing that because I remember uh, about about this about this in that content that repeat a lot of the of the conversation we are having here yeah. in this question. So I am willing to work with you on that because sure. the year I have worked in that committee, I have the data. Okay, great. Uh, I think we really need to to keep some kind of historic track. Yeah. It's track because there are people that when the DevCon is uh, out of Europe, they are not they are asking a sponsorship. But when it's in Europe, they are not asking a sponsorship. So, which I found is a, a quite good balance I mean, for European people. Right. There's also the, the contrary. Um, something I said uh, for the Asagoda, I think is worth mentioning, is that we should consider changing the way that asking a sponsorship works. Right now, you just do your registration, and the only thing you need to do is invest in five minutes in uh, putting some data in a, in a web formulary. I mean, it doesn't require you a lot of effort, and you have a lot to win. There are people like Morelli, Morelli says that they say, okay, I don't need the money, I won't do it. But for plenty of people, it's you just click and you might get money. And I also don't like of the system that there is no way of feedback between the, um, the work service team and the person asking, asking the money. Sometimes it happens, for example, when I went to the content, I asked for a sponsorship, I bought my tickets a lot of time in advance because I saw a very good offer. So I even asked a lot of money for a trip from Spain, and somebody from the, comi the committee asked me, oh, is your amount right? Because you didn't ask a lot of money. But it's the only time I have seen somebody reaching out to other people. I have been in the committee and I haven't done that. Yeah, we did that this year. M mostly Steve and I feel like Tim Martin also did. We had like, I think, less than 10 people that we had like questions. One, one case was somebody that asked more money than the flight ticket. So the flight ticket was a thousand and the person asked 1200, a thousand and two hundred. And it was like, is this a mistake? And then we actually find out that the person was considered all the other like taxi to the airport, price to get a visa. So the person was like, okay, my flight ticket's a thousand, but I actually need a thousand and two hundred to do all the stuff that I actually need to travel, which was, I think first time I saw that, um, but we reach it out. But we, I agree, the system should have uh, some easier way to interact. I prefer some system like by email or something like that, and there is some going for, and people can ask things. Yeah. Because uh, you can know everything about the situation of the person, but sometimes you can make some questions. So this year when we did have doubts and where we were confused about the information or we thought it looked strange, we did reach out to them and ask for clarification by email. Um, so they had an opportunity to respond. We had a couple of people who had strange requests for food sponsorship but not accommodation. Or we wanted to know why they were not asking for accommodation because we thought if they have the money to apply for a hotel, should that affect their ranking for food accommodation as well? In we had the other we had the other way around now, so they didn't ask for food, and we said, "Oh, I didn't know. I thought you were saving money." No, no, no. It's okay. <laughs> you can ask for food. So. Um, few cases like that, a few with some strange prices for tickets. Um. 
Uh, so we are almost <coughs> off to, out of time, so I will roll the, the three last comments and then we we'll kind of close session. Uh, so Luciano? I, um, I like um, this idea of choices somehow. And the, I also remember that when, when I was also evaluating people, I remember that it was hard to know if people is living nearby why the person was so different and the kind of things. So maybe we can extend the system to tell more information. Like, okay, which 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 flight are you planning to take, or and, and which how much is each flight, how much is what way is your stops, and that more information that you show that you yeah you make some research and investigate which one is the best option, and even we can share that information with others, but other people in the in the in. Coming from the same place, coming from right, the same place yeah. or nearby. I, I don't know. I, I noticed that everybody from Europe, for example, take the plane from Amsterdam to here. So obviously, we we, sh we, we can share that information, and we can also uh, force or enforce people to to do more research as just instead of just feeding the black right. Like mm -hmm. Asia. Yeah. Uh, the other thing besides the report or any kind of feedback that sponsored people as, uh, should be the encourage or force them to do. Uh, the other thing is, um, as I think the team could agree in some goals. What is this team working for and why do we sponsor people? So that it would serve as guideline for people to see if they, it's not that I, am I eligible or not to sponsorship, but is it, um, the thing of giving space for more people if I can pay or like some uh, what is why do we sponsor people and should I ask for some sponsorship or not if we can can agree in basic goals of this committee this this uh, team or this effort of the comp organization I think this could already like at least serve uh, and we we believe that we trust people to be sensible and to be Right. Yeah. And uh, Dave, yeah. do you think? The do problem is that many people this? apply and we may trust some of them, but probably not all of them. So, But I think it would already have help because what we have now, we don't even have this. Yes. So people can just say, oh, I didn't know. I, I thought you had plenty of money and why not? If there is money, uh, yeah. but if we have at least the goals clear, why we, and why it's not sustainable that every single DD apply. So maybe you should consider that you can contribute a little bit so that you live for who else need more. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Dave? So I think we should try a bit harder to get something concrete down about what, how need plays into this evaluation process, even if it's quite vague and it's not satisfactory <laughs> to any one of us, having nothing there is worse than, than I mean, it's, I think it's a big problem with the current, well, when I say the current, the process for the last five years, as long as I've known it. So I don't know how we can move forward with this, but I, I suspect that email lists are not going to be great. But anyway, I, so it's not so much a question as, I think this is a problem, and, and I think we should try and But careful, fix it. careful, because we, it, it is a problem, but it's not a drama. I mean, people, it's not, it's not like stop eating for coming here, and and it's um, yeah. Uh, and, and this this is kind of a lecture. I, I don't know. I, I I check my ticket and I ask for a sponsorship. If I don't get the sponsorship, I put money in advance in Debian, and I maybe not be able to come the next year. But it's not like, I, I'm pretty sure that it's not, or, or it should not uh, be a, a, a decision for the economy of anybody to be here. And no. uh, well, I think, but, but, okay, so we're way over time. <laughs> I, I think I'm talking about something different. So, so you're, you're talking about what it means for need for individuals. I'm talking about, supposing we could define that, <laughs> What it should, how it should matter to the committee, right? And, and mm -hmm. we have a range of options. I think nobody thinks it shouldn't matter at all. No, no, at least yeah. I haven't heard anybody propose that. I'm <laughs> not saying that it would be crazy, but um, and some people think it should be. Marga explicitly said it should be 
very one of the main yes. criteria, right? And so I don't know if we can. I think we have to do better than, than we do now in terms of people knowing, as as Mark said, going in a little bit about how much this matters. And that will also help people fill out the form in a more sensible way if they know that, you know, this is, we base a third of our ranking on your financial need yeah. or, or something like that. So to wrap up, there are like, I will try to provide as much data as I can publicly about this year. So parts of that form in terms of medium request and this kind of number so people can have a public idea about it uh, and that can goes into the final report. Um, and then uh, I will try to synthesize what we discussed it here and then thinking about some goals and, and especially for me it's very important to have the rules like this is how we try to grade you and then and then mix that with the goals of like our primary goal is to fund people that cannot come without this sponsorship our secondary goal so try to reach consensus around that um, and then um, so and the, the third thing is we'll try to find some of, of these questions uh, one, one little thing that I remember that I didn't post here but you were discussing is that one of the things that I would like to try for next year is ask some volunteers to go and like get a list of all the countries that people are coming from it's like what 40 and then we split among 10 people every people makes four research about how much is a flight ticket and we have a median or as Luciano suggested we crowdsource that and have everybody input that so we can calculate the medium so those things can work and the last thing is for the next year, one of the things that I'm going to propose, which I know is controversial, is having two people on this committee be sponsored by Debian. So we don't worry about last minute things like, oh, you're asking for travel sponsorship, so you can organize this, which will be my case. I won't be able to go to Germany if I don't ask for travel sponsorship, so I won't be able to work on this thing again. So, uh, and I know that it will be a problem for other I, people. I don't understand. Team. You say that the, out, out, the our auditors team ask it for nobody on the bursaries can ask for travel sponsorship. Okay. So I will ask this to be sponsored directly by Debian, I right? Just think that solves the problem. <laughs> well, in the past, being in the bursaries uh, committee. And asking for travel sponsorship was penalized in your study. Uh, yeah, I remember that yeah. era. But this year they requested to not even be penalized. That you can't be part of the team. You, you can have access part. to the numbers. Mm -hmm. So the auditors. The auditors. Yeah, Clint. <coughs> Clint and somebody else asking for this. I don't think it's on. It was a discussion. It was a decision from some previous discussion of this topic. Marty, I think you have the last word and then we are okay. done. Well, I, I did want to have the last word because I did want to say thank you very much for this work. It was awesome to be working with you. You took it up and you drove this. Um, and for us, uh, at least me, just being part of the bursaries team, it, it felt like, you know, stuff was moving and I could help a little bit. So I hope you're going to keep doing this. And I, you know, I would say you should just get sponsored even if you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming.